All right, let's talk about VeriSpeed recording. That's a new feature in version 7.1. So you can see here up on the top left-hand corner of the screen, we have a VS button. So we're gonna click on that and it comes up with a VeriSpeed dialog box that gives us semitones and synths. So kind of explain where all this comes from. Okay, well, this is, uh, you have to imagine this is like a tape machine. Okay. And this feature is part of our TapeX feature, which is a Mixbus 32C only uh, part of the program, okay? Because it does take significant CPU usage to do this. Mm -hmm. But you have to think back to your old, you know, four track tape machine. I assume maybe you started with that. I had a Porter Studio too. I did too. <laughs> and I had kind of hot rodded mine, but um, there was a tape speed knob. Do you remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the idea of the tape speed knob was, and the you know multi big professional multi track machines had better ones. We had oh, sure. you know little cheesy ones. When I took a tape to your house, your machine would probably run a little slower or faster than mine. So you had that tape speed knob so that you could take my cassette and speed it up or slow it down a little bit so that the instruments were in tune with what was on the tape. You know, mm -hmm. and people found out that you could do some pretty cool stuff with that. You could. Uh, sl intentionally slow it down or intentionally speed it up, either to you know sing a higher note than you could normally re reach, right. or slow it down so you could do kind of a challenging guitar passage. So this is going to slow down and pitch shift, just like tape does. But cool. because this is a recording feature and not an editing feature, we've labeled it with the music terminology semitones and synths. There are a couple of cool things you can do, but probably one of the most common, one of them is to maybe slow down by a semitone or two and play a challenging part a little slower. And in that case, you would actually move down the neck and play it two semitones lower, right? right. Or you can make just a really subtle change with the synth knob, and then you can get some cool doubling type effects. And you can either detune your guitar down to match the new synths, or you can leave your guitar essentially out of tune for that pass and get kind of a richer chorusing effect for your guitar double. Oh, cool. Okay. So which one do you want to try first? Uh, well, let's try the, the chorusy double okay. effect first. So let's go back to my track here and I'm going to, let's lower it by like eight cents. That should give us enough variance. And then on this other guitar track here, I'm going to arm it, make sure my input is correct, make sure my guitar is up. And I would suggest a clean tone if you have one. Yeah, this is still relatively clean. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to play higher on the neck or just the exact same that I was doing before? Uh, I think if you're going to double it, I would do the same thing you were doing before. Okay. Unless you want to double what you're going to do now. You could play higher and Let's we'll do double that. Because I don't really know what I did before. Okay. <laughs> so we'll make a range and then we're just going to loop this section and unarm the bass track with the metronome on. One, two, All right, there's that. Let's go to our other guitar track here. And now, well, we're going we're gonna to raise it up yeah, by eight Yeah, why don't we try raise it up eight, yeah. So the other one was slightly slower, so this is going to be just slightly faster. Yeah. Which is not only eight cents is not that much of a difference, but it'll work. All right, here we go. And two and ready. All right. Now I suggest you disable the Vera speed and solo those two tracks. Now maybe maybe pan one left, pan one right. So 
so we've got a wide chorusy guitar sound. One's a little high, one's a little sharp, one's a little flat. Now you could have retuned your guitar down a few cents. Yeah. Which would have changed a little bit of the tone of your guitar and made it sound like a diff different guitar, but more in tune. But I think this is going to really fatten it up. You know, there could be some cases where that's super, super cool. Right. To spread something out like that. Now let's try the um, slowing it down by two full semitones. Let's bring it down. Let's just rename it uh, Low Guitar. Ah, right, so if we were playing in A before, I'm now going to have to play in G. Okay. Okay? So... Do I want to play in a different octave for yeah. this, maybe? Could be. Okay, it'll sound different. And, you know, since this is going to be significantly slower, here's your chance to really put a lot of notes in there, you know. Oh, yeah. we are jazz it up, right? Jazz it up, man. <laughs> Here we go. Chord. Oh, it is slow. Oh, man. I wasn't feeling the whole extra notes thing, yeah, so I just kept fine. it simple. Sure. <laughs> We're making it up as we go along, clearly. Oh, yeah. All right, so I can just uh, see that. So I can just click on the red blinking dot, just turn off very speed, and now we can listen to what we have. Uh, let's go ahead and solo the two main guitar tracks. It does sound different than just playing it higher. Mm -hmm. Like if I were to just play it here, it kind of has this, uh, I don't know, just warbly kind of, mm. just different timbre to it. Yeah. So it's cool. Let's listen one more time. Now, it's still a sloppy mess, but it sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you want to hear it all with uh, just, just hear everything. Well, we have lots of opportunities to fix it in the mix. Sure do. <laughs> I kind of like the, uh, the the disco vibe we're going with here. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you have a lot of fun with these new features. We're going to make some other videos that get more into details of actually how to use them. This was just a fun time to hang out and show you how you might put it to use. Mm -hmm.